Hello, my name is Pastor Brandon Wittig. Uh, I'm pastor at Trinity Lutheran Church in Sawyer, and I'm here uh, sharing with you uh, some devotional thoughts uh, as a part of our series in the River Valley Ministerial Association for this year. We've done this in years past, and uh, today's video will be the first of six videos on uh, several meditative phrases uh, throughout the Lenten journey. Uh, today, I'll be sharing with you, uh, where is your faith? A reflection on that phrase uh, in Luke 8, verse 22 to 25. Uh, you'll also hear over the next few weeks, uh, who do you say I am from Mark 8, verses 27 to 30? What do you want me to do for you from Matthew 20, verses 29 to 34? Uh, do you love me from John 21, verses 1 to 16? How will you believe what I say from John 5, verses 30 to 47? And whom are you looking for? From John 20, verses 11 to 18. I think the first thing to do as we think about this question, where is your faith, is look at the word faith. Uh, what uh, is the big deal about faith? We hear a lot about faith in the church. We hear about faith other places as well. We hear about things done in good faith. We hear about things done in bad faith. Are you worthwhile uh, to be the center of someone's belief, or are you not? Are you trying to deceive them? That would be doing something in bad faith. The key of faith is the object. What is the faith in? What is the object of the faith? Is it in something that's worthwhile? Is it in something that's not worthwhile? So when Jesus is asking these disciples, where is your faith? The, the key here is him asking, what is the object of your faith? Is it in me or is it in something else? Uh, and as we read the text, I think we see that the faith is in something else. So let's take a look at Luke chapter 8, verses 22 to 25. One day, Jesus got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, Let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they set out, and as they sailed, Jesus fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filling with water and were in danger. And they went, and they woke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he awoke and rebuked the wind and the raging waves, and they ceased. And there was calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid, and they marveled, saying to one another, Who then is this that he commands even winds and water? And they obey him. I think it's really interesting to, to think about where the faith of the disciples is in this text. It's, it's very clear that it's not in Jesus. They, they are, are filling with water, uh, and these disciples, they're uh, fishermen. A lot of them are fishermen. They probably have experience in boats. They probably know what they're doing uh, when, they're, when they're sailing. They've probably dealt with storms before, but this storm, it's very clear, is something beyond what they can handle. And so they go to Jesus, and I, you could argue that they're going to him because they think he can do something about it, but it, it seems more like a panic to me. They're panicking, and, and they, they say, hey, Jesus, you're asleep. Don't be asleep during this time. You're going to drown in the water or at the very least get soaked. He says, hey, wake up. We're, we're dying, Jesus. And Jesus, in the middle of their panic, produces calm. Calms not only in his demeanor, he calms the very wind and the waves. And it says there was calm. And he asked that question, where is your faith? Is it in the things that you can do? Is it in their abilities as uh, people who sail? Or is it in him, in Jesus? See, the disciples, they don't get it yet. They'll get it eventually. You can see they get it after Easter or after the Ascension or after perhaps even not until Pentecost, but they get it. They finally understand who Jesus is and that he should be the center of their faith in all that they do. Uh, the disciples go on to suffer uh, many more trials than just a storm, uh, and they're able to do it because Jesus is the center of their faith. And they go through those things, probably not without worry, probably not without fear, but there's a peace that passes all understanding that comes only through Christ as they enter those things. And I think that's the question that we're invited to look at as well. I want to invite you uh, to wonder, where is your faith? 
Uh, there are times that we're living in right now that are full of panic, uh, whether it's political situations or unrest uh, around the world, uh, wars and rumors of wars. We've certainly experienced that, whether it's economic unrest or um, any kind of unrest whatsoever. Uh, where is our faith as God's people? Is our faith in our own abilities? Uh, is our faith in our pastors or our priests or whatever you use for the head of your church? Is your faith in the institutions that have been built up around God's word? Or is it in God? And I think anything that humans are a part of, there's going to be sin. But God, with God, there's no disappointment. With God, there is no panic. We see it very clearly in, in Luke chapter 8. And one of my professors, they, they used this this. Uh, quote, which I think comes from Corey Ten Boom, which is, there isn't any panic in heaven. God doesn't have problems. He only has plans. Now we look at our present situation and we might have reason to panic. There, there might be very good reason to worry. But we either have faith in our ability to get past those situations or we have faith in God to take care of those situations. He takes care of the wind and the waves. He takes care of our sin. Uh, the sin of the whole world uh, on the cross and at the resurrection. Where's our faith? Is it in the things we can see, the things we can feel, the things we can touch, or is it in the Lord of even the wind and the waves? Uh, I encourage you during this season, especially, and during it all seasons, no matter what's coming, no matter what might cause panic in our lives, that, that panic does not push out our faith, that our faith remains in the Lord of heaven and earth, the one who comes to earth and takes away all of our sins, who promises that in the future, those problems that we experience today, they will be gone. Now we can be God's people here on the earth to work to solve those problems, but we know they're never going to be fully gone until he returns, uh, until the earth is remade. We look forward to that day when there will be perfect peace, perfect calm, and finally no more panic. Uh, so please pray with me. Dear Lord, remind us that you are the center of all things, that you are the center of our faith, that when our faith is in you, we'll never be disappointed. Even if we experience hardship and suffering and trial today, we know that we have hope for tomorrow. Give us the peace that passes all understanding on our hearts and our minds as we experience the, the troubles and the trials of today. Remind us that you are at the center of all things and there's no panic in heaven. Be with us through our Lenten journey, Lord. In your name we pray. Have a blessed week and a blessed Lenten season.